here we have one of our smallest maple species, uh, striped maple. So this tree, you know, we mostly think about maples being tall canopy trees. We're thinking about red maple, sugar maple, things like that. Um, this is actually a very small tree um, and actually usually is kind of more brushy, um, very scrubby in the understory. Um, and because of that reason, it has a little bit of a bad reputation for interfering with regeneration because it forms this low blanket uh, of, of shade that's going to reduce the amount of things that can germinate underneath it. Um, so how to identify our striped maple here. They have very distinctive leaves. Um, they almost exclusively are growing in the shade, so they're usually going to have these big shade leaves. Some of the leaves you can see up there, they are a little bit smaller, um, kind of higher up on, on straight maples. And this is a, a pretty big one. I usually don't see them this tall. This is about the maximum that they're going to get, about 25 feet or so. Um, they're usually, again, you know, 10 feet, 15 feet tall um, and forming dense, um, dense stands on the understory. That's when they can kind of become an issue. So again, back to identification. We have three prominent lobes on our striped maple. Um, and then we also, right now, we do have samaras that we can look at. Um, so to me, so maple samaras can really help um, your identification, you know, with the size and with how they're arranged. These remind me a lot of red maple, um, but they don't get that pinkish hue um, like a red maple will. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the kind of final trait um, is going to be the bark. It's called striped maple for a reason. Um, and so we can look this one again. They don't usually get this large, um, but uh, you can see these stripes. But even when they're a small, kind of a quarter size diameter, you'll see these green stripes um, coming up through very visible, very, very distinctive. So um, if you have a, uh, you know, a maple with these three lobes like this, it can, I think sometimes people can think it sort of looks like a red maple. I would say it's, it's the, the lobes are very, very chunky, whereas they're not with a red maple. They're a lot more slender in a red maple. And then this bark is going to be your dead, dead giveaway. Um, for comparison here, we found a red maple right next to the, the striped maple. Um, uh, the red maple, yeah, has, you know, three lobes are kind of most prominent, but it usually has these smaller lobes towards the base, so kind of five usually. Um, but you can see how, you know, yeah, how kind of like stout and chunky the lobes are in our striped maple. And again, even in the very high reaches of the striped maple, you'll get these these very large leaves. Um, they always, they quite always look like this. Uh, so like other maples, this is opposite. Um, it does have the Samaras. Um, this is a very Appalachian species. Um, we are here in uh, uh, southwestern Virginia um, right now. Uh, this is uh, found kind of all the way up through the Appalachians. Um, not very high commercial value. Again, it usually has sort of a bad reputation from a forestry standpoint because it's just not really providing much commercial value, but it is taking up a lot of space in the understory. But just like some of the other species we've talked about, uh, that can cause issues by you know having a lot of interference, a lot of shade on the understory, a lot of that is if there are there's an overabundance of deer, um, or if there's suppression of fire, or if there's both. Because this, with this very thin bark, you can see this is not going to stand up to a fire. I mean, the, this the bark is right here. You can kind of see through. <laughs> um, so it's a very shade tolerant species. So that thin bark is going to help because it can do a little bit of photosynthesis in um, you know underneath its its bark. Um, however, it's not going to stand up to fire. So when we start suppressing fire. You're going to get a lot of more striped maple taking up that space in the understory. When we have too many deer, they're going to be eating things like our oaks and our hickories that we want to be, you know, putting the light um, uh, onto on the understory. And so, you know, the, the maligned nature of the species is more about kind of management issues than, you know, the species itself. So like pretty much everything else, it does have good wildlife benefits. You know, things eat those Samaras um, and it's also feeding a lot of insects that are feeding a lot of other things. So just like everything else, it has its place in our Appalachian ecosystems. Um, so you'll mostly find it, I usually find it in um, more higher elevation areas, more kind of, um, I would say Zarek to Mesic stands, um, usually associated with oak. In this forest here, we have a lot of sugar maple actually. Um, and we have a lot of sweet birch. We do have a lot of oaks and hickories as well. So a really nice kind of mixed um, Appalachian hardwood forest here um, where our striped maple is uh, very happy at home um, and should be here. So there you have it, striped maple.